Whether you're a middle school student, a high school student looking to transfer, or a parent of a student, trying to be able to find a high school that is the right fit can be an overwhelming process. And here at St. Henry District High School, we feel that we are one of those great options for you to choose from. To have high numbers, one of the things that we have to do is to put our teachers in a position where they have an environment where they can be able to collaborate with the students. The faculty at St. Henry are committed to preparing their students for life after high school. And some of the ways that we're able to do that is by offering a strong AP program, and we will also start offering dual credit courses for our upperclassmen. With St. Henry being a Catholic private school, faith is a very important part of our culture. We start and end our day with prayer, and also have several all-school masses. One of the things that we're also very proud of is that 100% of our students are actively involved in community service on and off campus. Here at St. Henry, we have several clubs and organizations for students to be able to choose from, and 23 different athletic teams. On campus, we have our own gymnasium, track and field, soccer field, softball, and baseball fields. And recently, we took over and renovated an athletic facility located in Florence, Kentucky. The things that we're doing here today at St. Henry District High School are making for an even brighter future. We're in the final stages of the building project for a new fine arts building with a 650 seat theater. We will also be upgrading our STEM labs on campus and adding additional STEM labs. When our students enter and exit our building, every single day they are reminded of our five pillars. Scholarship, faith, leadership, arts, and athletics. We believe these pillars are what lays out the foundation for our students here at St. Henry District High School, not only to prepare them during their high school years, but for wherever life may take them. Hi, welcome to Crew News, the first episode of 2020. I'm Anna Ferris. And I'm Noah Francis, here to share with you what's happening here at St. Henry. To start off, let's look back to the past week. All right, so this week, the girls basketball team made it to the All-A Finals. They beat Ludlow and Beachwood to get there. They went up against NCC, and it was a really hard game. It was back and forth for a while, but they ended up losing. So they finished off with all A runner up. The SHCHS swim and dive team competed in the all A state invitational where they set nine school records to become the combined champions. This was the first all A state invitational since 1980 and it will be an annual, annual event moving forward. Congratulations to all the swimmers and divers that competed. Another thing is St. Henry took first place at a hot hackathon this past Monday. A hackathon is a competition in which a person can build anything one once in 24 hours. This past weekend, the St. Henry team won first, winning $2,000 in digital ocean credit. <laughs> Congratulations, JP Mason, Lincoln Mason, Jacob Ritchie, Dylan Raylan, Carson Schmidt, Schmidt it, Daniel Literal and Allison Abbott for your accomplishment. In the academic team, St. Henry's varsity academic team beat Ryle High School this past Tuesday in the final game of the regular season. This Saturday, they move on to the District Governor's Cup to be held next weekend. Best of luck. The Crusader of the Week. Congratulations to Joseph Fetters and Paige Arthur for winning Crusader of the Week last week, January 6th through the 10th. All right, now let's look at what's going on right now. So today we're out of uniform and the money's going to Mary Rose Mission. And thanks for everyone that participated. I participated, obviously. <laughs> Stage crew signups. All are welcome to sign up for various support roles for the 2020 musical, Hello Dolly. Available options include lights, sound, set building, and more. Sign up at outside the choir room or find Mr. Avina if you need any, if you are looking, if you need any questions or have any questions. The next thing is the 10K raffle update. So currently the junior class 
is in the lead for selling raffle tickets. Let's go juniors. The sophomores are in second and the freshmen are in, and seniors are following. Next month, there'll be a blessing for the new fine arts building here on campus. Bishop Roger Foyce will be presiding. And to get more of an inside scoop, we talked with Mrs. Mendor for a construction update. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Ferris and I'm here with our Advancement Director, Mrs. Becky Minador. Hi. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. We're all excited about the new building being built. So can you give us an update about what's going on? Yeah, we're really excited. It's been a, it's been a very big week. Um, they installed all of the seats this week. So the only things that we have left to do um, are install the carpet, uh, finish up the curtains and the stage flooring, which is supposed to happen next week. I think all of the sound and lighting is in. So then we'll start testing and hopefully get our final occupancy first week of February. It's so exciting. It's very exciting. So what's St. Henry's vision for this building? So the vision for this building is that it will not only serve our students, but that it would serve the community as a whole. And when I say community, I'm talking about our, our grade schools, our feeder schools, non-feeder schools, other schools, um, but other groups in the community. So um, we will be using it on a regular basis, not just for our theater department, uh, but we'll also use it for all school masses, assemblies, um, speakers. I'm sure classes will go in there and use it from time mm -hmm. to time. But then we also hope to have, well, actually right now we already have nine groups that have rented out the facility over the next year or so. Um, and those include grade schools that want to use it for eighth grade plays. That includes um, dance studios that plan to use it for their recitals throughout the year. We have an alum who is doing a large fundraiser this spring in conjunction with UC. Um, we also have some community theater and uh, musical groups that plan to use it. So a wide variety. Um, our hope is then to move beyond that and also welcome in local businesses. I don't know that there's anything else in this vicinity that can hold 650 people in one space mm -hmm. um, with all that we'll have to offer. The entire lower half of the um, theater, the seating in the lower half, we have tablets, so it's great for meetings. Oh like yeah, so just nice. endless possibilities. We're very excited. <laughs> we also have several um, reunions that are scheduled. So whether or not they'll actually be in the theater itself, we have a lot of spaces around the theater. Mm -hmm. We have a black box theater next door um, that holds around 200, 150 to 200 people. So I know the um, Mr. Audie, our principals. 50th class reunion is coming up oh, this spring. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. So his group is planning to have their class reunion in there, and we're hoping to get all of our other classes back. It's a great reason yeah. for alumni to Hopefully come back. Hopefully mine will be in there. There when you I go. Graduate. Yeah. Oh, marking it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's going to be a blessing and a dedication for the new building mm -hmm. by Bishop Boys. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about that and yes. what it's going to look like? Yes. Yeah. So that is scheduled for Sunday, February the 16th at 2 o'clock. Um, invitations went out, but everyone in the community is invited to come. The more the merrier. We're so excited to show this off. So Bishop Foyes will formally bless the uh, not only the theater, but all the other new spaces in the school. You know, we renovated here in the Media Center. We have new STEM labs, um, lots of new areas. So he's going to bless all of those areas. So the ceremony itself will be relatively short for a formal ceremony. Um, we're thinking maybe 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some people here from our steering committee, um, people who did fundraising, things like that, to say a few words. Mr. Audio will say a few words, some people from the diocese. Um, and then we're just going to have the facilities open for people to be able to come in and see everything that we have. Um, we're hoping to have some of our students uh, show off whether it's uh, choral, band, um, art, some of their artwork to be here to show off, our crewbotics and um, esports hopefully will be able to show off some of what they've got going on mm -hmm. now in our science labs. Um, I think even our culinary club is going to hopefully get involved and do some of the food that we'll have oh, that day. Fun. So yeah. yeah. We're excited. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be fun. I should join culinary. You club. should <laughs> totally. <laughs> that Absolutely. sounds like fun. So what else? Anything else coming up for the advancement office? Yes, actually, this next month, month and a half is huge, um, but all great things. So we have the blessing, like I mentioned, February sixteenth. A week after that, uh, February twenty second is our auction, which is our school's largest fundraiser. Yeah. For twenty years, it's been called the Renaissance Auction. 
This year we're changing it up a bit, so we're calling it the Crew Bid and Bash. We've moved it to Summit Hills Country Club. Um, still going to be a great night, still have lots of great items, still raise a lot of money for the school, but hopefully a little bit more fun, um, dancing, things like that oh, have yeah, been added was, in. Yeah, and then the fun. following week will be our first big show in the new theater. So oh, yeah. our theater what's, department, what's the show? Hello Dolly. Gotcha. Hello Dolly is going to be our first musical. So I believe that is the 20, February 27th? Yeah, 27th, 28th, and 29th. Um, so just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Lots of big things going on. That's I'm awesome. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Mrs. Mendorf, for that update, and we look forward to using the new space soon. All right, next up, just as a reminder, we're going to be off school on Monday, January 20th, to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. was born January 15th in 1929, and MLK Day is observed every third Monday of January. St. Henry will be hosting a Priority Registration Day for incoming freshmen next Thursday evening, January 23rd, January 23rd, from 6 to 8 p.m. Service hour stats. So we've got an update on service hours from last semester. St. Henry students logged over 10,000 hours of service, averaging out to 18 and a half hours per student. Given that students are required to do at least 10 hours a semester, that is a pretty impressive stat. Remain committed to serving other St. Henry and keep the good work up. And now, let's turn to our sports segment. The boys basketball team is competing in the All-A tournament. Tonight, they're going up against NCC at 6 o'clock in the semifinal match. We encourage everyone to show up and support the crew. But if you can't make it, we'll be having a live broadcast at the SHHS YouTube channel. For a preview of the matchup tonight, we send it over to Gabe Ryan to talk with Wyatt Veith and G. Bessler. Hello, my name is Gabe Ryan, and I'm here with junior basketball players Jude Bessler and Wyatt Veith, and thanks for joining us. First of all, congratulations on your win on Tuesday, and what do you think you guys did well to help you come away with the win against Holy Cross? Well, Gabe, starting off, I think we played excellent defense, and we kept them on their toes so they didn't really know what to do, and that helped us get the win. Uh, we just moved the ball around and we worked together as a team and it was a total team effort. Um, my buddy here, Jude, had a big game, so we kind of piggybacked off Jude and he led the way. All right, and NCC tonight, what are they strong in, what are they weak in, how do you exploit that, and how do you guys feel going into the game? Well, Gabe, you're a basketball player, you know how it is. They, you got to expect everything. They can shoot, they can play defense, we just got to work harder than them and that's, we'll get the win in the end. Um, they have a, had a lot of injuries this year, and um, we believe that one of their best players is coming back tonight. So we, uh, we're we going to lock in on him and um, try to shut him down and shut everyone else down on the defensive side. All right, well, best of luck, Wyatt and Jude. And I'm Gabe Bryan, sending it back to the booth. Thanks for that, Gabe. We look forward to a great game against NCC tonight, later tonight. As for upcoming sports sports events, the boys varsity basketball team could play in the All-A Finals tomorrow night, pending a win this evening. And they will be playing regular season games at Ryle High School on Thursday, be there, and at home against Newcath on Saturday. And for the girls, the varsity girls basketball, basketball team has two home games against McNick on Wednesday and Dixie on Friday. So show up and support the girls. The next thing is the archery team. They'll be competing in the Boone County Tournament on Monday and the Camp Ernst Tournament on Friday. Come out and support the crew. And that's a wrap for this week's Crew News. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, the Malay Company, Athletic Boosters, and St. Vincent de Paul for making this possible. I'm Noah Francis. And I'm Anna Ferris, signing off.
Whether you're a middle school student, a high school student looking to transfer, or a parent of a student, trying to be able to find a high school that is the right fit can be an overwhelming process. And here at St. Henry District High School, we feel that we are one of those great options for you to choose from. To have high numbers, one of the things that we have to do is to put our teachers in a position where they have an environment where they can be able to collaborate with the students. The faculty at St. Henry are committed to preparing their students for life after high school. And some of the ways that we're able to do that is by offering a strong AP program, and we will also start offering dual credit courses for our upperclassmen. With St. Henry being a Catholic private school, faith is a very important part of our culture. We start and end our day with prayer, and also have several all-school masses. One of the things that we're also very proud of is that 100% of our students are actively involved in community service on and off campus. Here at St. Henry, we have several clubs and organizations for students to be able to choose from, and 23 different athletic teams. On campus, we have our own gymnasium, track and field, soccer field, softball, and baseball fields. And recently, we took over and renovated an athletic facility located in Florence, Kentucky. The things that we're doing here today at St. Henry District High School are making for an even brighter future. We're in the final stages of the building project for a new fine arts building with a 650 seat theater. We will also be upgrading our STEM labs on campus and adding additional STEM labs. When our students enter and exit our building, every single day they are reminded of our five pillars. Scholarship, faith, leadership, arts, and athletics. We believe these pillars are what lays out the foundation for our students here at St. Henry District High School, not only to prepare them during their high school years, but for wherever life may take them. Welcome to Erlanger for the biggest game of the season for the St. Henry Crusaders versus the Beechwood Tigers. I'm Max Schluter alongside Zach Day and you're looking live in Erlanger for the All-A Regional Championship. Last night St. Henry had a thrilling win over NCC off of the Reed Ravenscraft game winning and won. Zach, the Crusaders did not play well last night but still were able to pull it out. What must they do against an elite Beechwood team? Well, for me, I think what they need to do tonight, <coughs> Beachwood's, Beachwood's guards are going to pressure them all night long, full court, half court. Uh, St. Henry's guards are never going to see uh, open, they're not going to have any open room. If they can beat these Be Beachwood's aggressive guards and get it down, they can work through their big men, who I think should be able to control this game. So I think the key is uh, beating their guards with the dribble and get and feeding your big men down low. Next, two for St. Henry is a candidate to be a spark off the bench tonight, as Cody Teton was yesterday for the crew. Well, as I said, you got to work through the big men on the offensive end, so I'm looking for Cody Teton to have another night like he did last night. He played very well, was able to finish, was very efficient on the floor, and I think if he can keep it up tonight, I don't think this Beachwood team's got the size to stop him. Thank you, Zach. And when we come back, we will tip off St. Henry versus Beachwood for the All-A Region Championship game.
God, please be with me and my teammates as we prepare for our game. Help us do our best to remember the skill we have practiced. Help us to work together to achieve our goal, whether we win or lose. God, we love our opponents also. Help us to remember to be good teammates and competitors. Keep the safe as we play. Amen. Our next lesson will sing once again tonight by Hannah Beach. A scoring battle. Him, Beans can both score at will on this. I'm excited to see this matchup tonight. On the floor, Scotty Droud, Will Downton, Cole Bussold, Brandon Hughes, and Mitchell Riley. On the floor for the Crusaders, Connor Shea and Alex Daniel, Wyatt Veep, Jude Bessler, and Luke Mayer.
It is rocking here at Erlanger. We are about to tip off what is going to shape up to be an instant classic. And the tip controlled by the Tigers of Beachwood. And we saw we'll take it into the backcourt. To Henry and man to man. And we see Alex Daniel on six foot five, Scotty Drow. And Veith on Downton. Riley to the basket. No good. Rebound to Jude Bessler. Good defensive stand there by the Crusaders. Ben Henry's going to have to be uh, extra careful with the ball tonight. They had a couple more turnovers than they would have liked in their uh, game against Newcastle. And I'm, I want to see them keep, the, uh, keep control of the ball, crash the offensive board, and get some second chance opportunities there. And Connor Shea, no good on, on the shot. And the first two possessions result in no score. Downton as he ended that Lloyd game last night with a windmill dunk. They got the fans excited and Scotty Drown fouled him to the free throw line. And Zach, Alex Daniel, the 5'9 guard on 6'5 Drown. What do you think of that matchup? Uh, Daniel's quick. I think he can, he'll be able to stay in front of Drown the whole night. I just don't, Drown will be able to elevate over him, but hopefully if he can keep the pressure on him and stay up close and uh, stay tight, that he'll be able to force a couple misses. That's all St. Henry needs. Scotty Drow gets the first one dropped. And the second one good. Two nothing start. St. Henry won in a thriller last night over the Newport Central Catholic Thoroughbreds. A game where they led their last led before they had the game-winning game won by Reed Ravenscraft. It was in the first quarter, and a turnover by Luke Mayer. And Drow took it in, seeking contact, and get it. Tapped around, and he's got it. Saw for three. No. That is their strength, is the three point shooting. And with six and a half to play in the first quarter, it's 2 0 Beachwood. Alex Daniel. Hesitation. Luke Mayer for three. No good. Ted Henry's got to attack. They need to use those big men inside. I'd like to see them get the ball to Jude Bessler and Wide Veith. I'd say, especially Wide Veith down low because he's got a. I feel like he's got a size advantage on uh, Downton. Oh, Downton for three. Five fifty-seven to go. Five nothing. It's Will Downton, very good athlete. And it's five nothing. Start Beachwood with the momentum. It is loud here. Bessler's got it in the corner, guarded by Hughes. And they look very confused on offense right now. That's who needs to have the ball behind the back. Mayer thought about it, and he traveled. The second turnover by Luke Mayer to start. We saw bringing the ball up, guarded by Connor Shea. Brown rises up and hits. That's what he does. That's what he does. He's a shooter. Seven nothing start for Beachwood. Daniel and Cody Teton, the man of the night yesterday. Shea tries to the basket and scores. That's what I want to see. I'm, I'm glad to see Cody Teton get in there early because I feel like he can really make an impact on this game. I don't, I, like I said earlier, I don't think either of uh, Beachwood's big men in the game right now can uh, hold up to Teton's height and size. And a foul on, right, or no, just hit over the basket, and Teton checks in for Mayer. Teton was co-player of the game last night along with Reed Ravenscraft. He had 15 points, a career high, and the thrilling win over Newcastle. Connor Shea for three. Got it! Right there. 
He's going to be big for the St. Henry Crusaders here tonight. Four and a half to go, seven to five. Beachwood's a shooting team, so St. Henry's also going to have to hit some shots of their own. And Connor Shea's a huge part of that, one of our best shooters on the team. So very good for him to see one go through the rim this early, build up that confidence. And Riley went off his own leg. He was looking for the foul, and it's St. Henry basketball. Four minutes to play. Bessler. Riley matched up on Teton inside. Daniel for three. No good. And that was not a, that was an ill-advised shot there by Alex Daniel. And the Tigers got it. Reversing the ball. Stroud's got it, guarded by Daniel still. Three and a half to play here in the opening quarter of the All-A Championship. Stroud pulls up. Good rebound for Jude Bessler. Here he goes in transition. Bessler over to Daniel. Stop. That's his bread and butter, guys. Yeah. Zach got down 7-0, calmed down, and now it's tied 7-7. Seven seven. I really like to see, I know Pete just checked in the game, but I'd really like to see this offense start to work through uh, Carity because if you can get a, if you can get him to start making his buckets inside, they're gonna have to start collapsing, which will open up the shooters on the outside. Down for three, no good. Up, hit another bounce, and save her basketball. It's very questionable call. Could have gone either way. I think they got it right. Aang into the game for the Tigers is Will Rolf and Cameron Decker. Over to Teton, guarded by Riley. They get it inside the beat. Teton, 15, no good. Foul on Scotty Droud. That was on Downton, excuse me. Seven to seven, two and a half to go. Both teams, or Beachwood came out ready to play. St. Henry came out ready to play, but they were a little anxious. Special three, no good. And here comes Downton. I would like to see them work the ball a little bit more down there. Seemed like a little bit of a four shot. They're getting too comfortable with the three. And Zach, Beachwood has four players on the floor that can all shoot the three very well. Drow decides to take it to the basket, and he's fouled heading the line for two. How do you match up with that if you're St. Henry? You just gotta, we, we got quick people on the court. V, Daniel, Connor Shea, uh, Besser, they're all quick. They can all guard the perimeter. So they just need to get up and make sure they have a hand in their face because I don't care how good of a shooter you are, you can't, it's a, it's a lot tougher to make a contested three than just letting them shoot out there. And Ryan Butler coming in for Alex Daniel. And now a little bit more length on Scotty Droud. And Droud gets the first one to go. 2.20 to play. The second one, no good. Deep into the lane. And he traveled. Looked like he slipped, though. And a lot of sloppy play. Too many turnovers. In, in the first quarter, I think both teams just need to calm down and settle into this big game. They pin it down for Riley. And a foul on Cody Teton, and he's heading to the line for a chance to complete a three point play. <laughs> And Cody Keaton looks like he just slipped there on that play, and Veith slipped on the other end. A lot of wet spots yeah, on the floor. I agree. St. Henry's also, when they drive, St. Henry doesn't have to jump. They, they got enough height that they just need to put their hands up and let, uh, let Beachwood miss the layups. They don't have to try and force anything. And he gets it to go under two minutes to go. 11 to 7. Brian Butler wanted to shoot that one. Backs it down instead. Oh, 
Connor Shea. Not really a lot of options for St. Hit. A lot of options on the floor, but none are getting nice open. Guys. Deep for the cut. <laughs> Butler on. Looks like they're in a 1 2 2 zone. Trout, good. Pump fake. No good. He does not miss those often. Exactly. That's what I was just getting ready to say. I know he missed it that time, but you just can't just leave it open like that. Splash! Right there. St. Henry takes the lead, 12 to 11. Ryan Butler has a lot of confidence as a three-point shooter. Hit a big one to tie it at 48 yesterday. And he's got a lot of confidence. Always ready to shoot that. And Trout says, I can do that too, 13-12. 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. And Reed Ravenscraft, the hero of last night's victory, getting set to check in for St. Henry. Twenty seconds to go. We're just gonna hold it. Shea into Teton. Butler, he's ready. Swing it. Steal turns no, and Riley's got it. Here comes down the heave. No good. That's the end of the first quarter. Ryan Butler comes in and it is splash then splash. 15-13. That's the end of the first quarter. And now we are back for quarter number two. And now we'd like to take a moment to say thank you to all of our sponsors. At this time, we would especially like to thank the Athletic Boosters for their support. Thank you for helping make tonight's broadcast possible. And 15 to 13. Here to start, Raid Ravenscraft, no good. Corey Shea underneath. Ryan Butler, he wants to shoot it. And Reed Ravenscraft hasn't to shoot it. Beef. Butler, will it be three? It will be three! And a little stare to the crowd. That is three straight for Ryan Butler, 18 to 13. And Butler with a steal. And he is playing really well right now. Riley over to Decker. Trowell for three. Got it. And that's what they needed right there. We started to see a lot of momentum switching to San Jose Sayers. That was a big shot. Butler moving around. Will it be four? That 
He checks. That's their fight on the ground. And it's Beachwood basketball. And a heat check there for Ryan Butler. Six and a half to go. 18 to 16. Salt in the backcourt. Looking for Cameron Decker. And the moving screen heading back to St. Henry. St. Henry going with a little bit of a smaller look right now. And Ryan Butler has hit three threes already. Picking up where he left off yesterday. Ravenscraft for three. He two, wants two. one of his own. Twenty-one to sixteen. Boots all for three. No good. Can't add to the three-point fest. Twenty-one to sixteen. Ravenscraft looking around for deep. Deep. What a Fessler. Three. No. Okay, two, three. Happy boys. They sure got to keep attacking to the paint. And Luke Mayer getting ready to check back in. Scotty Drow to the basket. Took a little too many steps there, but no call. 21 18. 5 20 to go in the second quarter. Drow on Butler now. For Shea, drives. Probing, put it up and got it blocked. Here comes Busol. To the basket, no. Rebound by Ryan Butler. Here he goes, over to V. Three ball. No. They're firing, they gotta stop. And, charge! That's a happy meal for Ryan V. That'll be gifted by Coach Faust. 21 to 18, 443 to play. Running the point guard. Downton on Brian Butler now. Veef. Foul heading to the free throw line. And Shea and Daniel getting ready to go back into the game. Gets the first to go, and Zach, it's 22 to 18. It's been a three-point fest. St. Henry playing into Beachwood's team as they are a three-point shooting team. Even though St. Henry's winning, would you like to see them get back to their way of basketball, which is pounding the ball inside? I really would. I mean, yes, they've been hot, but you can't rely on the three-point of the whole game. You're going to go through stretches where you're not going to hit it, and then when you get there, you're like, man, what do I do? they got to get back to St. Henry basketball. Just because Beachwood shoots the three don't mean they have to. Good cut to Drown. Scores! 407 to go. 22 to 20. Here in the All A Regional Championship game. Beef. Probing. Alex Daniel. And now the starters and Reed Ravenscraft are on the floor. Mayer, back to Daniel, no real movement right now. Pick and pop for Mayer. It looked lost on the offensive end right now. Veith, 
He wants to change that narrative and he scores 24 to 20. Trout in range, no. Wyatt Heath and a charge. Beachwood basketball. And Chief Bessler in for Luke Mayer. And in for Wyatt Heath, excuse me. Mitchell Riley and Ryan Butler about to check in. Who solved for three? No. Rebound to Daniel. 2.50 to go. 24 to 20. Ravens grab for three. No. Good rebound to Bessler. Daniel, Connor Shea. Yeah, I think Alex Daniel should have shot that. Mayer going to work. And they said he traveled, and it's Beachwood basketball. Zach with 2.38 to go. On the floor, he got Ryan Butler, and Jude Bessler, Shea, Daniel, and Luke Mayer. And I'm going to finish my question when we come back. 2.33 to play, 24 to 20, and we would like to take this time to thank all of our sponsors for the Broadcasting Club, especially the Malay Company. Thank you for helping make tonight's broadcast possible. We'll be back shortly. We are back here in Erlanger, 2.30 to go. And Zach, to finish my question, who that's on the floor for St. Henry needs to be a go-to guy to try and push this lead? And Ryan Butler will answer that for you. The pass to the foul! To answer your question, I don't really have a guy. This team out, or this uh, group out there, they just need to work together and get the shots just like that. Run in transition. I think every single player out there can have an impact on this game. Ryan Butler's come out and hit three threes, has multiple steals, and he has just been a game changer. And Bessler ripped it out of his hand. Butler wanted that one. Shea drives, floater, and has a little bit of a foul, and it's off Drowd's hands, and it's going to stay with St. Henry. He should play really sloppy right now. And Teton in for Mayer. Almost a steal. Connor Shea. Into Teton. Scores! And 28 to 20 with a minute 50 to go. Another steal by Ryan Butler. Minute 30 to go, 28 to 20. Good cut into Teton, no good. And we're seeking the foul, but Riley did not foul him. Drowd into the corner to Decker. Back to Boussard inside, Drowd. Nice Throw five. pass to Riley. You gotta no make good. Layups. As you said it, Zach, gotta make the layups. Riley gets it back and scores! Makes up for it. That was a bit of a what? circus shot there. Whatever that was, it went in. That's all that matters. 
Daniel three. Boom! 31-22. 45 seconds to go. Drow. Go Wolf. No good. Rebound to Riley. Went up with it. Got it deflected. Here comes Alex Daniel. 20 seconds to go. Jude Bessler all the way for two. <laughs> Sam Hendricks playing really well right now. Take no seconds. Going into half. Five seconds. 33-22. They double trial. He pulls up for three. No good. That's the end of the first half. Wow. 33-22. St. Henry leads Beachwood. We will be back for an exciting second half in about 10 minutes. Hi, welcome to Crew News, the first episode of 2020. I'm Anna Ferris. And I'm Noah Francis. Here to share with you what's happening here at St. Henry. To start off, let's look back to the past week. All right, so this week, the girls basketball team made it to the All-A Finals. They beat Ludlow and Beachwood to get there. They went up against NCC and it was a really hard game. It was back and forth for a while, but they ended up losing. So they finished off with All-A runner-up. The SHCHS swim and dive team competed in the All-A State Invitational where they set nine school records to become the combined champions. This was the first All-A State Invitational since 1980 and it will be an annual, annual event moving forward. Congratulations to all the swimmers and divers that competed. Another thing is St. Henry took first place at a hot hackathon this past Monday. A hackathon is a competition in which a person can build anything one once in 24 hours. This past weekend, the St. Henry team won first, winning $2,000 in digital ocean credit. <laughs> Congratulations, J.P. Mason, Lincoln Mason, Jacob Ritchie, Dylan Raylan, Carson Schmidt, Schmidt, Daniel Literal, and Allison Abbott for your accomplishment. In the academic team, St. Henry's varsity academic team beat Ryle High School this past Tuesday in the final game of the regular season. This Saturday, they move on to the District Governor's Cup to be held next weekend. Best of luck. The Crusader of the Week. Congratulations to Joseph Fetters and Paige Arthur for winning Crusader of the Week last week, January 6th through the 10th. All right, now let's look at what's going on right now. So today we're out of uniform and the money's going to Mary Rose Mission. And thanks for everyone that participated. I participated, obviously. <laughs> Stage crew signups. All are welcome to sign up for various support roles for the 2020 musical, Hello Dolly. Available options include lights, sound, set building, and more. Sign up at outside the choir room or find Mr. Avina if you need a, if you, are looking if you need any questions or have any questions. The next thing is the 10K raffle update. So currently the junior class is in the lead for selling raffle tickets. Let's go juniors. The sophomores are in second and the freshmen are in, and seniors are following. Next month there'll be a blessing for the new fine arts building here on campus. Bishop Roger Foyce will be presiding. And to get more of an inside scoop, we talked with Mrs. Mendor for a construction update. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Ferris and I'm here with our Advancement Director, Mrs. Becky Mendor. Hi. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. We're all excited about the new building being built. So can you give us an update about what's going on? Yeah, we're really excited. It's been a, it's been a very big week. Um, they installed all of the seats this week, so the only things that we have left to do um, are install the carpet, 
uh, finish up the curtains and the stage flooring, which is supposed to happen next week. I think all of the sound and lighting is in. So then we'll start testing and hopefully get our final occupancy first week of February. That's so exciting. It's very exciting. So what's St. Henry's vision for this building? So the vision for this building is that it will not only serve our students, but that it would serve the community as a whole. And when I say community, I'm talking about our, our grade schools, our feeder schools, non-feeder schools, other schools, um, but other groups in the community. So um, we will be using it on a regular basis, not just for our theater department, uh, but we'll also use it for all school masses, assemblies, um, speakers. I'm sure classes will go in there and use it from time mm -hmm. to time. But then we also hope to have, well, actually right now we already have nine groups that have rented out the facility over the next year or so. Um, and those include grade schools that wanna use it for eighth grade plays. That includes um, dance studios that plan to use it for their recitals throughout the year. We have an alum who is doing a large fundraiser this spring in conjunction with UC. Um, we also have some community theater and uh, musical groups that plan to use it. So a wide variety. Um, our hope is then to move beyond that and also welcome in local businesses. I don't know that there's anything else in this vicinity that can hold 650 people in one space mm -hmm. um, with all that we'll have to offer. The entire lower half of the um, theater, the seating in the lower half, we have tablets, so it's great for meetings. Oh like yeah, that. so just nice. endless possibilities. We're very excited. <laughs> we also have several um, reunions that are scheduled. So whether or not they'll actually be in the theater itself, we have a lot of spaces around the theater. Mm -hmm. We have a black box theater next door um, that holds around 200, 150 to 200 people. So I know the um, Mr. Audi, our principals. 50th class reunion is coming up this <laughs> three. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. So his group is planning to have their class reunion in there, and we're hoping to get all of our other classes back. It's a great reason yeah. for alumni to Hopefully come back. Hopefully mine will be in there. There when you I go. Graduate. Yeah. Uh, marking it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's going to be a blessing and a dedication for the new building mm -hmm. by Bishop Boys. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about that and yes. what it's going to look like? Yes. Yeah. So that is scheduled for Sunday, February the 16th at 2 o'clock. Um, invitations went out, but everyone in the community is invited to come. The more the merrier. We're so excited to show this off. So Bishop Foyes will formally bless the uh, not only the theater, but all the other new spaces in the school. You know, we renovated here in the Media Center. We have new STEM labs, um, lots of new areas. So he's going to bless all of those areas. So the ceremony itself will be relatively short for a formal ceremony. Um, we're thinking maybe 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we'll have some people here from our steering committee, um, people who did fundraising, things like that, to say a few words. Mr. Audio will say a few words, some people from the diocese. Um, and then we're just going to have the facilities open for people to be able to come in and see everything that we have. Um, we're hoping to have some of our students uh, show off whether it's uh, choral, band, um, art, some of their artwork to be here to show off, our crewbotics and um, esports hopefully will be able to show off some of what they've got going on mm -hmm. now in our science labs. Um, I think even our culinary club is going to hopefully get involved and do some of the food that we'll have oh, that day. Fun. So yeah. yeah. We're excited. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be fun. I should join culinary. You club. should <laughs> totally. <laughs> that sounds like fun. So, what else? Anything else coming up for the advancement office? Yes, actually, this next month, month and a half is huge, um, but all great things. So, we have the blessing, like I mentioned, February sixteenth. A week after that, uh, February twenty second is our auction, which is our school's largest fundraiser. Yeah. For twenty years, it's been called the Renaissance Auction. This year, we're changing it up a bit, so we're calling it the Crew Bid and Bash. We've moved it to Summit Hills Country Club. Um, still going to be a great night, still have lots of great items, still raise a lot of money for the school, but hopefully a little bit more fun, um, dancing, things like that oh, have yeah, been added was, in. Yeah, and then the fun. following week will be our first big show in the new theater. So oh, yeah. our theater what's, department, what's the show? Hello Dolly. Gotcha. Hello Dolly is going to be our first musical. So I believe that is the 20, February 27th. Yeah, 27th, 28th, and 29th. Um, so just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Lots of big things going on. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. No, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Mrs. Man.
Welcome back here for the second half of the All-A Regional Championship, 33-22. St. Henry leads, and we would like to thank the St. Vincent de Paul group for being one of our many sponsors and making tonight's broadcast possible. And it's 33-22. I'm, I'm looking to see a fiery Beachwood team coming out of the tunnel in the second half. Come out aggressive, just like that. St. Henry came back down. They got to keep going with what they do, uh, did in the uh, sec first half. But I'd like to see a little more attacking to the ribbon, uh, a little less shooting the three. And Mitchell Riley with the basket. Seven and a half to play, 33 to 24. And Speechwood was down 11 at halftime, made it a nine point game. Here comes Dalton. Drow. Drow in and out. Foul on Connor Shea. And Zach, how would you recap that first half? Uh, I mean, I, I just can't. And really a strip ahead to beat, scores! The only thing I can say is the same Henry just played great basketball. The first half was con con clearly controlled by St. Henry. Uh, and I just like. I, it was awesome to watch, and I hope they can keep it up. In 35 to 24, wide deep in the breakaway there. Dalton, three ball. Nope. And Riley goes flying into the stands. 35 24, six and a half to play. Deep, he wants to go to work. Shea drives, no good, one of the foul. Besser botting Drought a little bit. And they got him for the foul. Get it into Will Rolf. Taken away by Bessler. A lot of turnovers by Beachwood. And St. Henry's doing a great job of capitalizing on all the six. Thirty-five to twenty-four. Five forty-five to go in the All A Regional Championship game. Daniel, no, rebound, Bessler. And they got an offensive foul. And I'm going to be straight up, that is an awful call. As Ravens Graf is checking in for Bessler. Just as you said it, Max, that, there was nothing there. That's he, blasphemy. Exactly. No box out, nothing. He just went up and over and got it. And five and a half to go, 35 to 24. Nice way up right there, nice way up. And 5.16 to play. 35 to 26. Ravenscraft just simply lost the ball. And Drow couldn't control it. Still seeing her ball. And the hot shooter, Ryan Butler, checks into the ball game. And Cameron Decker in for the Tigers as well. There it is. Oh, wow. Oh, a block there by Down. That's a great recovery right there. More of a clobber, if you will. I agree with that. Down's got it. Trial blocked by Wyatt Beat. And they got a foul call, and 
I got two words for you, Zach. No way. Yeah, that that looked pretty clean to me. I think the rest just thought it was too good to be true. Timeout, say Henry, as we just saw LeBron James type of block. I would like to take this moment to uh, say St. Henry will be hosting priority registration for incoming freshmen uh, this Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Sign-ups are still open on the St. Henry main website. And we'll be back shortly. out with the line shooting two. No good on the first. It's a rare miss from the free throw line from him. And the second one in and out. Uncharacteristic back-to-back -back miss at the free throw line for number 24, Scotty Drought. That's how you know it was a clean block. Miss both, which means it's unvalid. Four forty to go. Still a nine-point advantage for St. Henry. Ravenscraft over to Butler. They get it into the power step. Blocked by Good Decker. defense right there. Good D. What do you want to see on defense from St. Henry right here? The same thing they've been doing all night, containing all their players. Uh, they've done a great job on Drowd. They're doing a great job on calls and turnovers, and that's what it, right there. Great example. They just need to keep doing what they've been doing. And an offensive foul on the Tigers. And Shea. Not really much movement right now. Now there's some movement. Ravenscraft. Blocked by Riley and he threw it off Ravenscraft. Yep. That's a smart play right there. That's a good play. Great defensive play there by Riley. It didn't really seem like St. Henry really knew what they were doing in that possession. Take Reed Ravenscraft taking the ball off the bounce is a very good option. Not the shot they wanted though, and down with a little dipsy do for two. Three and a half to play. Over to Connor Shea, Ravenscraft, third three of the night. Second one's good. Thirty-eight, twenty-eight. Three minutes to go. They've been doing a great job on drought tonight. And they're in the zone right now. Two, three. Nice five. And wow! Couldn't call the foul there on that block. Thirty-eight, twenty-eight. Beachwood seems at a loss on the offensive end right now. They, don't, they really just don't know what they're doing. And we'll see where they go. See where they go for their offense. Very dangerous pass there by Riley. Looks good. Downton got it. Behind the back. Going to work. No. And rebound to Drought. Seven point game, 220 to go. Drought all the way to the hoop. The two. Make that every single time. 
five point game. Each is starting to string together a little run, see what's in here you can do to respond. Yep. And he traveled. Thirty-eight thirty-three. And a timeout St. Henry. St. Henry will be hosting a priority registration for incoming freshmen this Thursday from 6 to 8. Signups are still open for St. Henry on the main, the main website. We'll be back. Right after this. We're back, minute 58 to go. We'd like to take a second to thank all of our sponsors, including the Athletic Boosters, who thank you for making this broadcast possible tonight. And 158 to go, beats work with all the momentum right now. Five point game. I imagine they're gonna get drowned in some kind of pin down. Yep. And nice move, score. elevated over. Good defense, better offense. 38-35, minute 30 to go here in the third quarter. We knew Beachwood wouldn't go away. Daniel guarded by Drown. Okay, squares, no good. That's off Riley. It'll stay with St. Henry. St. Henry got to start taking advantage of these Beachwood having a couple of silly mistakes and nothing puts the team down more than capitalize on them. Hughes checking in for Beachwood, Teton checking in for St. Henry. Ryan Butler. He's been really quiet this half. See if he can uh, provide a spark like he did in the first. Hunter Shea. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Teton wants it. Will we give it to him? And a foul on Hughes with 39 seconds to play, 38 to 35. <laughs> Teton, he's gonna take him off the bounce. Ryan Butler. And 30 seconds to go. Do you want to see the ball here with Zach? Uh, I don't think St. Henry needs a three, so I'd like to see them working into Cody Keaton and let him work. <laughs> He's been very quiet tonight. They haven't really uh, utilized him much in the post. And to me, coming into this game, I thought that gonna, it's going to be the exact opposite. But we'll see here. Deep. Butler's open in the corner. They just got to get it to him. Three ball. No. And that's the end of the third quarter. 38-35. St. Henry leads. We have an instant classic on our hands, and we will decide the all a regional championship. Uh, I'd like to take this time also to say the swim, uh, St. Henry District High School swim and dive team recently participated in the all a state invitational, where they, uh, where they set nine school records to become the combined champions. Uh, well done, crew.
We're back for the fourth quarter and what is shaping up to be a thriller like last night. 38-35, Beachwood trail by 11 at the half, cut it to three, and they go to Jubessler right away. Didn't have an opening. Teton. Bessler probes. No good. Rebound to Riley. Come on, boys. Got to get something going offensively. And I like the matchup of Butler on Trout. Zach, what about you? I do too, but they're going to set a lot of screens, so I don't know how. That's just a nice move right there. You can't stop that. That's great offense. Scotty Trout for two, one point ball game. They get it into Teton. They need this one. He got the fake. He got the bucket. And he got the foul. 7 10 to play. And a chance for a three point play. Beachwood's got a double team down low. Cody Teton will, Cody Teton will finish all, uh, all the time down low. It's, you got to have more than one person on him, especially. Uh, I don't know what that was, but that's, that's a shame right there. I've never seen this before. He just simply lost the ball when he's shooting the free throw. And just got to simply laugh that one off. I don't know what this call's going to be. Max, do you have any clue what this call's going to be? I have no idea. Yeah, I've, something I've never seen before. And I believe it'll be Beachwood basketball. Yep. He Zach, he just simply lost the ball. Yeah, I mean, you can't really do much about that. I really don't even want to call that a turnover just because hands were slippery, ball slippery. It's not I've, his fault. I've never seen that before, but Beachwood basketball. Seven minutes to play, 40 to 37. Trout for the tie. No, that would have been huge, but they got the rebound. Second try, no. He wanted that one. 6.50 to play. I don't know how often he's going to miss that. St. Henry's got to play tighter defense on that three-point line. Deep into the lane. Pulls. No. And six and a half to go. It's a three-point ball game. Here comes the start out of the pack. Trout in range. Foul. That's a silly foul right there. One of the best free throw shooters uh, in the region in this tournament, and you just gave him three shots. And not only is he heading the line for three, that is number four on Jude Bessler. We've already seen very little of Bessler tonight. He's one of the key players on this St. Henry team. He provides a lot of offense and a lot of defense for this team. So if he goes out, St. Henry's going to have a big hole to fill. gets the first. 6.29 to go, and he just missed the second one out of three. And Daniel gets Bessler. And now they got the lineup of Shea, Daniel, Butler, Team, and V. And he missed it. He missed two out of three. That is rare. He's just not been from the, hitting from the free throw line today. He already missed two earlier. I mean, from, from from what I remember, he's one for five. What is that right now? I'm not sure, but it's looking like that. And 6'10 to play, 40 to 38. Say, Henry, they just got to grind out this victory. Approaching six to play. Connor Shea, Ryan Butler. He had the hot hand in the first half. He wants another one. No good. I don't like that shot. I don't like that shot. And they got a foul on Cody Teton. I don't like that shot. Cody Teton was sizing up real nice in the paint. I mean, he's made it when you give him the ball, and I just didn't see a reason for him not to be called in that possession.
crowd. And he traveled. And this floor is, this floor is getting a lot of victims tonight. And wiping up a wet spot on the floor. Five and a half to play. 40 to 38 in the All-A Regional Championship game. And it's been a while since St. Henry had their last field goal. It's the and one by Teton. Will Daniel change that? Thief does, 42-38. Big puppy right there. Now it's a two possession game no matter what. Downton's got the ball. He's got in gym range. And play for Trout. Riley. Going to work. Got away with a walk there. Tipped around and Beep's got it. Four forty to go. Forty two to thirty eight. Running down to Teton. He's got Riley on him. Nice cut. And we're off Beachwood and it's Sander basketball. Daniel into Teton. Muscles up. No. Good rebound from Riley. Tough defense. I'd like to see a. Uh, Cody Teen had a big mismatch on that inbounds. I'm really, really shocked that they didn't go there. And a block on Cody Teton. Foul shots coming for Scotty Drow. See if he can make these this time. No good. He's been struggling from the line tonight. Forche checks in for Alex Daniel, giving him a breather with 4-12 to play. Missed it again, and it went off beat. My goodness. This game would be a different game if he's hit at least half of his free throws. This would be a tie game. Game of fingertips right now. Down. Got it. Timeout, Beachwood. 42 41. 4 4 to play. And we'll be back. Sure. Welcome back, and I'll take this time to say eSports is taking on new members for its spring season, and it is open to eighth grades who will be freshmen next year. We have played 
League of Legends, Rocket League, and a new game will be added next week. We will keep you posted. Under four to go, 42 to 41, and Will Downton three, cuts it to one. And they're trying to get Teton on that block. Butler, he wanted smart it. Smart decision, smart decision. Almost. Ball. Shea's got it. Butler, nope. big three. He knew he missed it. He chased it, and Riley's got it. Ahead to Drow. Shea's running. And Beachwood takes the lead. Just like that. How composed to St. Henry. We've seen it all year long. They haven't folded under pressure. Can they do it again? Shea to Butler. They want it into Teton. Can't get any good angles. Down on Shea, back to Butler. Working around. Thief, that's their go-to guy. Head of the line for two. And that is a foul, guys. I agree 100% with you, Max. 2.59 to go. Missed the first. Oh, that miss from him, too. He's usually pretty solid from the free throw strike. And Bessler's subbing in for Teton. Beachwood's got a chance to extend Down this lead. Down is wide open in the corner, but they missed him. Drown. Hussar, no. Rebound to Beach. Here he goes. He's pushing. It's transition. He scores! Two and a half to go. 44 to 43. Back and forth we go here in this fourth quarter. They got Butler on Drought right now. That's the man to watch, as well as Drought. Or, and Down, excuse me. Down tip, got it back. Two minutes to go. Drought, they got, he got it on the block. He faces up and scores. He does, he's a scorer. Big moments, quite big plays. That right there is a big call. Timeout, St. Henry. 2-1 to go, 45-44. And before we take our break, I'd like to mention that St. Henry is selling t uh, selling tickets, still selling tickets for its 10K raffle. And then uh, check the school website for the purchase of the tickets. Thank you. We're back. 2.01 to play. 45-44, Beachwood leads. St. Henry led by 11 at the break. Beachwood came out firing. And it's 45 This game is exactly what we expected to be. Back and forth, back and forth, and this one's going to come down on the wire. Bessler into Butler. Wrap around to Corshay. Big three. Got it! That's his first shot of the night, and he drills it from three. Fearless, I tell you. Fearless. Minute and a half to play. Not the play we expected, and a good, good foul by Butler. That would have been a layup, and Drought has been struggling from the line tonight. Sends him to the line for two. Good foul there by Ryan Butler. It is loud. Drought's been struggling from the line all night long. No good on the first. He's not able to buy one right now from the free throw shot from the water And they all seem short. Got to use his legs. And the second one goes. 
47 to 46, minute 30 to go. They need help, they gotta get it over. They gotta get it over. And a timeout, St. Henry. And 120 to play. We'll be back for the finish of this game coming up shortly. Minute 20 to go, 47 to 46. A big three-point shot there by Courche. That was his first shot of the night. Takes it, drills it. He'll get it into Butler. Around to Bessler. Oh, near turnover. They gotta get it across. Does, barely. And Butler, head to Bessler. And a foul. Still have fouls to give with 103 to go. 47 to 46. They get it in the corner set. He went over and back. That's the turnover right there. They were viewing the call. The referees. And they're going to inform both coaches. And it's St. Henry basketball. And the Beachwood fans did not like it, but it could have gone either way. on Cameron Decker. Fifty-eight point six to play. And they're fouling them very hard right now. Fifty-eight point six to go. Forty-seven to forty-six. They get it into Veith, and they call a foul. Why Veith end the line? He just missed two before. And senior Teddy Chapman trying to hype up the St. Henry crowd. He's the senior forward in the IBO league. Trying to get this place on their feet. Fifty 
56.8 to go. It is loud. Deep. He missed it. Awfully. That's a corner number one and one. 50 seconds to go. It's a one point game. Scotty Droud's got the ball. Guarded by Butler. Forced him to his left. And now Downton's got it. And almost lost the ball. 35 seconds to play. 47 to 46. They get it into Riley. And Beachwood basketball. And Alex Daniel checks in for Porsche. Timeout Beachwood. 30.9 to go, 47-46. Beachwood's got the ball, and you'll see the end of this one when we come back. We're back, 30.9 to go, 47 to 46. They're gonna play for a while, they don't know what to do. They get it into Downton. 25 seconds and I think that they're gonna look for the last shot. They run Downton around. They try to get Trout on the block. Almost lost it. They double. He turns, no good! He's got it! And he's fouled with 11.7 to go! Beachwood got what they wanted, but they couldn't convert. Game's not over yet, gotta make these free throws. Even then, no matter what, it's gonna be a one possession game. And Veep has been struggling from the line as well tonight. Big free throw coming up. Got it! That's big time! Why Veep is a big time player. Hits the first. 11.7 seconds to play. The second one. It's good. Timeout St. Henry. As Wolf checking in for Beachwood. 11.7 to go. 49-46. Zach, you can do it. You have to guard the three. You have to, and you can't foul. Well, here's the thing. You're up three. Why can't you foul? You send them in, they only got one free throw, the best they can do. Get two points and you're still up one. And then you gotta go to the free throw strike. I'd rather them foul before they shoot than have them get a shot up. I say that you play this out and make them hit a three to win the game, or to tie the game, rather than risk missed free throws on our end. I guess we'll see. Remember, 11.7 seconds to play. This is the biggest game in St. Henry history. Here we go. 11.7 to go. They get it in the drought. 10 seconds now. And a steal! Kessler! Missed the layup! Four seconds. Downs got it. Two seconds for the tie. No good! That's it! It's over! It's over! 
St. Henry is the LA Region Champions with the final score 49 to 46. That is final. We will see you at Eastern Kentucky. What a tremendous win. That's all you can say. Words can't describe what just happened there. Ready to gut it out, St. Henry. And the scene in Erlanger. What a finish. 49 to 46. And that's it. The St. Henry Crusaders are the OLA region champions. We'll be back for the post game shortly. Whether you're a middle school student, a high school student looking to transfer, or a parent of a student, trying to be able to find a high school that is the right fit can be an overwhelming process. And here at St. Henry District High School, we feel that we are one of those great options for you to choose from. To have high numbers, one of the things that we have to do is to put our teachers in a position where they have an environment where they can be able to collaborate with the students. The faculty at St. Henry are committed to preparing their students for life after high school. And some of the ways that we're able to do that is by offering a strong AP program, and we will also start offering dual credit courses for our upperclassmen. With St. Henry being a Catholic private school, faith is a very important part of our culture. We start and end our day with prayer and also have several all-school masses. One of the things that we're also very proud of is that 100% of our students are actively involved in community service on and off campus. Here at St. Henry, we have several clubs and organizations for students to be able to choose from, and 23 different athletic teams. On campus, we have our own gymnasium, track and field, soccer field, softball, and baseball fields. And recently, we took over and renovated an athletic facility located in Florence, Kentucky. The things that we're doing here today at St. Henry District High School are making for an even brighter future. We're in the final stages of the building project for a new fine arts building with a 650 seat theater. We will also be upgrading our STEM labs on campus and adding additional STEM labs. When our students enter and exit our building, every single day they are reminded of our five pillars. Scholarship, faith, leadership, arts, and athletics. We believe these pillars are what lays out the foundation for our students here at St. Henry District High School not only to prepare them during their high school years, but for wherever life may take them. The following the ninth region tournament champion for 2020, the St. Henry Crusaders. Representative Bill O'Donnell, Captain 
Vikings, James Stoll. Within the Lolo Panthers, Ian Melendahan. Within the Old Cross Indians, Jeremiah Hicks. Jordan Watchberry. <laughs> Representing the Newport Wildcats, Khalil Davis. <laughs> Representing the Newport Central County Thoroughbreds, Cody Muller. Representing the Beachwood Tigers, Scotty Drowell. Representing the Southern Crusaders, Wyatt Beast. Representing the Beachwood Tigers, Will Jackson. Crusaders, Ryan Butler. The 2020 tournament MVP representing the St. Mary Crusaders, Jude Tesla.
Welcome back. St. Henry just won the All-A Regional Championship, led by Wyatt Veith, who had a monster game, came up clutch with rebounds, had some big free throws at the end. And Wyatt, I would like to present you the Autumn Group Player of the Game. Congratulations. Thank you, Ma Thank you Max. And Wyatt, you guys led by 11 at the half. What was the uh, – been Beachwood came out firing in the second half. What? How did you guys answer from them coming out hot? Um, coach told us. Uh, they were going to come out hot, and we, we knew they were going to come out guns a-blazing, and we decided to remind ourselves to stay poised and work, work the offense and get stops on defense and just work as a team to get this one out. And at the end, when, when Jude Bessler got, got the ball from Will Downton, misses the layup, Downton gets the rebound, what is going through your mind? You know, I, at first I was thinking, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. But once he pulled off for three, I knew we, I knew we had this one in the game because I knew he wasn't going to hit that. And you guys are going to be playing next Thursday night, 9:30, late one. How are you guys going to be ready for the for such a late game? You know, we're just gonna we're gonna go to practice, work hard, and not really worry about worry about how late it is. Just make sure we're ready to play and come out and show what we're made of and show what St. Henry is. Thank you, Y, and congratulations again on the Autumn Group Player of the Game and being the All-A Regional Champions. I would like to thank Mr. Z, Zach Day, Dylan Miller, Mr. Carbo, and all of us who made this broadcast possible. I'm Max Schluter, signing off.